What's happening everyone? Welcome to another episode of our 2022 WRX build. Now I'm gonna bring you up to speed on what we've already done. If you haven't seen the first two episodes on our YouTube page, please go check them out. Otherwise, let's get right into it. So far in the car, we've done a couple small changes. You see the Grim Speed license plate relocation kit. On the interior, we have shift knob. We've got a panel filter in here. We've got uh, the limited edition Grim Speed cherry blossom windshield banner up there. And certainly a sound modification, which is taking our existing WRX Gentleman's catback and adapting it to this chassis. So the next step is something that we haven't seen anyone do quite yet. These cars have been out for at least a few weeks and you've seen a lot of shops start to modify. Typically the go-to is color matching these panels, which we do plan to do. But one thing we noticed that this car is lacking is the brakes. So there are no monoblock brakes anymore now that there's no 22 plus STI, there's no Brembo version of these. So WRX people cannot upgrade to those. With that, I think we figured out a solution, but we don't know 100%. So you guys are kind of coming into the journey of what could potentially be a big brake kit for this 22 WRX. So basically what we did before we picked up the car is pre-order some of the ingredients we're gonna need to make this happen. And the idea was there's two routes for this. You can go with all OEM STI stuff, although that's very expensive and there's a limited amount of those, especially if we're talking about the uh, six piston larger brakes from the 19 plus STI. So most people aren't going down that route because you're gonna end up spending three to four grand just to get a bigger brake package on your WRX. So what we've done is go down a route that I did with my Forester XT. So if you guys saw any pictures or episodes of that, um, I actually upgraded to Cadillac ATS Brembos with a conversion kit. And then I did limited two pots on the back. We're gonna be doing something a little different with this, but the idea is the same. We're trying to source as many new items as we can for more or less the lowest cost that we can and make it work as a setup. Something that's feasible for us to do, but also for you to do, spending 15 to 1700 instead of 35. I'm gonna do a bit of an unboxing and show you the stuff I'm talking about if you're not familiar. First and foremost, the star of the show is gonna be this Cadillac ATS Brembo. So this is pretty close to the four pot um, OEM Brembos that the STI would come with. Just a heck of a lot cheaper and you can buy them in a brand new form, not even refurbished. So these are gonna be hopefully fitting onto the front with the help of this CTS and ATS um, swap bracket from ctsvbrakeswap.com. There are these cool brackets that are gonna make those calipers fit, also some spacers and hardware and things in order to make it all happen. And then obviously all the other stuff, Faction Fab uh, were awesome yet again, hooked us up with some rotors. So there's the fronts it looks like. Then we got some rears underneath. We've got some Faction Fab spacers as well because we're gonna plan to run a factory STI wheel on these. So we wanna space them out a little bit. Not sure if 20 or 25 mil is gonna be just right for us yet. And then uh, Faction Fab stainless steel lines. You've got Brembo pads and all of the hardware and things we need to make it work. And then uh, through some of our early prototyping, we realized that we probably have to extend the studs. So we just bought APR studs just to be safe. We're gonna start mocking it up and see if we need all of these things or if we need more. And then hopefully at the end of all this, uh, probably in the description below, we're gonna have all of the part uh, items listed out. That way you guys can do something similar. The one thing that's probably gonna be a little more difficult is we're anticipating a bit of custom work. We're not sure exactly how far uh, we're gonna have to go, but that's what we're here to find out. One thing to mention is we are not gonna be keeping these factory wheels. There's a reason we got the base model and that's to get rid of a lot of the basic stuff. And so that'll be upgraded. These won't even fit anyway. They're 17 inch. They're not gonna clear our Brembos, which are huge. If we can get these to work, you can see how much bigger they are over the two piece stock. Uh, Corey also tells me they are gonna be lighter. They're cast aluminum versus cast steel. They're gonna have better braking capabilities and uh, I'm most excited about how good they're gonna look. So aesthetically, what it'll do is it'll give us an idea of what the 22 plus STI should have looked like. 
So we just wanted to compare the two rotors, the Faction Fab uh, slotted version versus stock. Uh, it's obviously a bit bigger, and so we're gonna have more service area for that Brembo to do its thing, get the brake capabilities uh, a little bit better over stock, um, and it's just a better looking part. So excited to get it on there, but it looks like we might have some challenges making it fit with the caliper, with those brackets, without some sort of spacing. But I guess let's find out. Yep. So right away we're running into the heat shield. So that'll have to come off. Okay. All right, so we know the rotor fits on. Now we just need to see if the brackets let everything line up and even if the brackets line up. And we know that these work for the 15 through 21. So our assumption was the hub isn't much different. Although, you know what happens when we assume, but hopefully these do line up. Let's try. This is the wrong one. Owen here, editing this video. That was, in fact, the right bracket. The brackets can be swapped side to side, but in order for the caliper to bleed properly, it will need to sit up a little higher than you will see in this video. We notice this after filming, and you will see the positioning corrected in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, looks like we're looking at that. And it looks as though they line up. Awesome, good news already. So on the bottom hole of these, you're actually required to drill the knuckle to clearance the bolt. So we're not gonna do that yet until we verify that everything fits. Um, so now we can grab the caliper, put the rotor on, see where the caliper lines up and see what we're working with. So I'm gonna give you that. Yep. <laughs> Wow. So it looks like the rotor is going to need to move out a bit. You can kind of see how it's just naturally pushing it out as I tighten the one bolt for the caliper on. Yep, and I do see that the mounting insert for the caliper is going to be contacting the rotor. So just as we thought, we're going to need to space the rotor a little bit farther out of the car exactly how much that's going to be uh, determined. But can we step away from it just to see what it could potentially look like? Awesome. All right, we're going to show you what we've done and kind of roll with us on this one because it's not going to look very professional, uh, although it has given us the sizing that we need. So basically we've used the CTSV swap uh, spacers, which are four mil each. So we've got eight mil in that. We put a couple washers in for a total of around 11 and a half to 12 millimeter. And if you throw the rotor on, then that spaces it just enough. I'll have Corey put on the caliper. Keep in mind that bottom one isn't drilled out yet. So it's right. not gonna be able to tighten up. So there's gonna be a little wobble there, but. But we can see that we have nice rotation and it's not hitting on the inside portions of the caliper on either side. You're just going to get brake pad as soon as the lines and fluid is in and the brake pads are clamping that rotor properly. So what that really means is, yes, you can get a big brake, a big caliper to work on a 22 WRX with a little bit of spacing. So next thing we're gonna have to do is make some sort of custom spacer to go uh, on the inside of this rotor. And we're clearly gonna have to use those extended studs because these are just not gonna be long enough to hold a wheel properly. Uh, so I'd say 90% good news, 10%. Moderate, moderate success. <laughs> moderate success. <laughs> Trial and error. Yes. So we're gonna show you the magic of 3D printing. Corey, can you give us a breakdown of what we've got in front of you? Yeah, so basically we determined that with these very scientific washers, uh, the spacing thickness that we needed was right around uh, 11 and a half, 12 mil. Um, so what I did is I mocked up basically the same exact design, which is pretty easy, just a five by one 14 bolt pattern, matched the center bore and made it the thickness that we need uh, to achieve this height. 
which should space the rotor out enough to sit perfectly in that caliper. So we can try that now by throwing this on. 3D prints have a tendency to be a little tight sometimes. So let's get that. There we go. Nice. That's a press fit. That's good. Yes. Uh, all right, so let's get that rotor and we'll throw the caliper on and see if our spacing is right where we want it to be. Try and put it on this bracket and again we only have the top bolt of the bracket in currently because we don't want to do anything we can't undo until we verify that everything else is going to line up here so haven't drilled into the knuckle yet but that's what you're looking at so since everything went really well with the caliper and rotor mock-up, the next thing is we're going to need to remove these OEM studs in favor of the longer APR ones to be able to accommodate for that spacer that we're going to be putting in. And Subaru is actually doing us a favor with this new chassis because the hub is removable with these four bolts here. There you go. Just like that. So we're just undoing everything Subaru did like a month ago to put this car together. <laughs> Well, we've got our press in this spare room. It's a little bit of chaos because we're redoing the entire shop, but we do have access to it and I wanna show you what we're gonna do. Basically, we've gotten the hub out and we wanna press the studs so we can line up this little socket and theoretically anyway, they'll drop right through. Okay, last one. These have come out so nicely. It is one of the most satisfying things we've done on this car. Watch, there you go. Nice and easy. Here you can see the difference between the APR extended stud uh, which is obviously the longer of the two. That one. And the OEM stud. So that should give us the extra length we need to safely attach a wheel to this vehicle after we do the spacing. Exactly. So, so now, now we just press it the opposite way. Yep. We are on the home stretch of this brake conversion and things are going surprisingly well. We've got the hub with the extended studs on here. We've got that 3D printed spacer that Corey made. Next, we're throwing the rotor back on and then just making sure the caliper still fits, everything is good. And now we can actually throw a wheel on as well. So we'll probably pull one of the factory STI wheels off of our 2020 and just sort of complete the package. And that will show us exactly what the setup is gonna look like. I think it's time for the big reveal. We've been working on these calipers for a couple of hours now and I wanna show you guys what it looks like. This isn't the end result, keep in mind. We do still have to get things painted. As I mentioned, we have to put the stainless steel lines on and also fabricate that spacer. But without further ado, that's what a 22 WRX looks like with the proper brakes. So we've got the 22 WRX, we've got calipers from Cadillac, and we've got wheels off an STI. It's getting a little wacky over here, but I think as a total package, it looks good. The couple things I don't like, obviously the bland color of the caliper, so that's gonna change. We know what we're gonna go with, we're just not gonna reveal it quite yet. And this two-tone wheel color, we've always hated this as a factory wheel, but I do like the pattern, so we'll likely just make it a single color. Not quite sure what we're gonna do for that yet, um, but this car will be getting that. I think it looks awesome. What do you guys think? Tell us in the comments and uh, we'd love to hear your input. We are wrapped up on the front for the day, but tomorrow we are gonna be addressing the rear of the car so Corey can kind of give you an overview of what the plan is. You may be surprised to hear we are not fitting the four pot Brembo's from the front in the rear. Uh, so for the rear, we chose to try the 17 STI caliper and we're not sure if it's gonna fit. If we're lucky, it'll bolt right up. We may have to do some spacing. We may have to do some, I'm assuming, trimming or cutting of the heat shield that's back there to fit the bigger STI rotor. Uh, but we should be pretty close to in business with this, I'm hoping. The next day. We've done a quick assessment of what we're gonna have to do back here, and it seems like it's gonna be a bit more involved than what we did up in the front in terms of modification. So Corey, you wanna give us a quick rundown? Yes, we are going to need to remove, obviously the caliper and the rotor. There is an e-brake uh, scenario in here, parking brake that we're gonna need to uh, sort out as well. And then we also have this huge heat shield that's definitely gonna need to come off. We were looking at how we might be able to do that, and it seems like it's sandwiched in with the hub to the knuckle, so when we pull the hub off to put the extended studs on, we should be able to pull that heat shield off. Uh, and then just some other things like the e-brake cable and such will need to be disconnected as well. Easy peasy. All right, we're gonna get to it. You guys can uh, just watch.
So now that we've got the hub and this uh, brake assembly out, basically we're gonna divvy out the tasks. Corey's gonna go and drill these welds out right here so we can take the heat shield off and I'm gonna go press out the studs. Now, since you guys have seen me do that already on the front, uh, I will give Corey the camera so he can show you his progress on this and then we'll come back together and reinstall everything and hopefully the rear caliper that we chose fits. We have reconvened back the car and done our individual tasks. I got these studs in just fine. Corey got the heat shield off of this almost just fine. He cut his thumb a bit. You can't see the carnage, but there was lots of blood. Uh, so we're moving on. Everything is looking pretty good at this point, but it's still a bit of a guessing game whether or not this will fit. So we mocked the caliper up as best as we could before, but without that heat shield removed, we really didn't know. So our measurements weren't exact. So I guess you could put it up there and that doesn't really tell us much just yet. I mean, we know. It looks like it lines up pretty good. Okay, so that's confirmed. We did think the bolt holes were gonna fit and they do. Now it's really the spacing between everything. I know we had to space the front, as you guys saw with some custom spacers. Whether or not we're gonna do that in the rear remains to be seen. So we're gonna start assembling it and uh, figure it out. Uh, as often the case, the rear e-brake stuff was a bit of a challenge, but we were able to get everything assembled. And now we're gonna be putting the rotor on. So we wanted to show you the Faction Fab slotted rotor versus the OE. It is larger, which is gonna accommodate our larger caliper and obviously uh, increase our braking dynamics, not only in the front, but in the rear as well. So that should go on pretty easily. Should be no drama there. Boom, very nice. And then I think it's time to mock up the caliper. It's the moment of truth here. Well, it looks awesome whether or not it fits, we'll see. We are all finished up, and this is one of those rare cases where everything went to plan mostly. I guess that's side Corey cutting his finger. Everything else went absolutely to plan. So we got the caliper on, and we did think we were gonna need a spacer because we had to mock things up with the heat shield that we ended up removing. It turns out that it is a direct fit. There is no need for a spacer. It lines up right in the middle. So as you can see, the rotor turns just fine. So the rear is taken care of. The front, as you guys already saw, is taken care of as well. So our next steps in the next part of this video are gonna be to tear these things apart, get them over to coating, get them back, put them back together, get it on the car, add the stainless lines that we got from Faction Fab and actually take it out for a drive, see how the improved braking feels. But the really exciting part in all of this is I do believe we're the first to do a big brake kit on the 22 WX. So it is possible with relatively minimal modifications. Uh, what we're probably gonna do in the next episode is list out all the part numbers in case you guys wanted to do something similar, but we do wanna have a proof of concept to make sure this is a modification that we're happy with out on the road. As always, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Please leave comments on what you thought about this episode and uh, really the build in its entirety. We have much more to come. These are just the first couple, but we are gonna be modifying this car extensively the longer that we uh, own it. And I would say we're moving pretty quick already. Uh, also, share our page follow us and uh, really just support us in any way you can because the more of you guys watching and interacting with us, the more of these type of episodes we can put out and exciting content, things like that. So we appreciate the support. We'll see you in the next video.